There it is, the dreaded name error message. Stops your Python code right on its tracks, but what does it actually mean? And in this code example, it's fairly obvious that we are using a variable called age that doesn't actually exist. And that really is the source of all name errors. Hi and welcome back. My name is Jose with Teclado. In today's video, we're going to look at one of the most common errors in Python, the name error. We look at what it is, how we can fix it, and when it happens so that it never happens to you again. Let's take a look. So as we've mentioned, a name error happens when you use a name that doesn't exist. So what is a name? A name in Python is anything that we use to refer to a value. So that can be a variable that we've tried to use that doesn't exist. It can be a function that we've tried to use that also doesn't exist. In this case, the name is do something and it would be a function as we can see from the brackets, but it actually isn't anything. It's a name for something that doesn't exist. So you get the error. And when we run the app, you would get that do something is not defined. So when we try to use a variable that doesn't exist, Python gets confused and prints out that error. The fix is straightforward in this specific instance. We simply define the variable first and then we can use it. Now, when you run the code, you get 25 out because the variable now exists and there is no name error. Sometimes a name error can pop up in more complex situations though. Let's define a function called print age and it's going to print the age and then we're going to call this function. Here we've defined a function called print age and use the age variable inside it, but it doesn't exist. So when we try to run the app, we now get a longer traceback that says that the error was at the age variable here and it's not defined. We can fix this a number of different ways. And this is one of the more common issues I see when I'm teaching Python. Where should you define this value? And there are a few places you can define it. You can define it here outside of the function. You can define it within the function or you can define it as a parameter in the function. And if you do this, then you'll have to pass in the value that will populate that parameter as an argument when you call the function. When you define the variable within the function, this is a local variable and it cannot be used outside of the function. If you try to do print age down here, the variable was created within this function and it no longer exists when you exit the function. If you define the variable up here, then you can use it within the function and also outside it. But you have to be careful because you can do stuff like this, where you reset a value for a variable that already exists outside your function, inside a function, and things start to get confusing. You can see that although we executed print age first and we set the value of age to 30 and then we printed 30, that's the first 30 that you see down there. When we print age again outside the function, it's back to 25. That's because this variable is a new variable that was created inside the function. And it did not overwrite this one. It simply was a different variable that ceases to exist when you exit the function and you are only left with this one, which is the one that was printed down there. So something to be careful when using global variables like this one. I normally recommend whenever possible that you use arguments and parameters. So this function should take the value that it is going to print and this should be passed in there and now there are no potential problems with variables being defined or redefined elsewhere also remember with all of these variables and with python that they are case sensitive so if you have a variable called age all uppercase and you try to use age all lowercase python's not going to like that and you're going to get an error as well Another instance where a name error can occur is if you try to use a module that you've forgotten to import. For example, if we do this and now we run the app, it says name OS is not defined. And now in Python 3.12, you get a nice message that's saying that you forget to import OS. And that is indeed what would have happened here. If you import OS, now this will work and you'll get your random digits here. Notice that if you use a name within the module that doesn't exist, you don't get a name error. You get an attribute error because you've tried to access an attribute of the module. And that is slightly different. To avoid name errors, as you've seen, I recommend using an IDE or code editor that has some kind of syntax highlighting and linting built in. Here you can see the red squiggly line underneath tells us that there is an error before we even run the code. In Visual Studio Code, which is what I'm using, you can use the default PyLance that comes when you install the Python extension, or you can also use the rough extension, which I really like because it's a bit faster. A linter, as you can see, is a tool that detects potential errors in your code, and in some cases can even fix them automatically for you, but not in this case. 
That's everything for now. If you've liked this video, consider hitting like and sharing it with someone else. And if you want to watch more concise Python tutorials, hit subscribe as I'll be making more of these. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.